Today's video is going to cover Meyer's fourth play from the high guard. The description is quite long and it actually includes a counter to the play. So we're going to treat this as a two-part video. We're going to cover the first part of this play today and then next week we'll cover the counter sequence that Meyer describes. So as always, I'm going to start off by reading the translation, give you kind of my mental shorthand and then how I, I practice it on the pelt. So the fourth device. Note when you come thus into the onset with your sword in the air in the guard of the day, and you perceive that he does not cut so quickly at you so that you can well begin your device in the before. Then cross your hands above your head, the right over the left, so that it seems as if you intend to thrust at his face. Meanwhile, step to him with your right foot and with this pull your sword around your head towards your left and cut powerfully from your right with a short edge thwart at his left ear. Pull quickly back away and threaten him with a long thwart at his lower right opening. Yet do not allow it to connect, but in the same motion, pull your sword back up, and thirdly, let the short edge run off deep against his left ear. And afterward, strike the short edge with crossed hands deep in at his right ear. As soon as this hits, step back with your left foot and cut with the long edge from below at his left arm. Thus you stand in, shown by the figure on the left in the small scene on the upper right in image G. And image G it just shows uh, a high-handed low cut. So again, Meyer is showing, even though it's a cut to the lower opening, your hands are still high to protect your head. So th that is a lot. The nice thing is this play actually encompasses generally motions that we have seen before. So rather than being a countering play, Meyer says that we've come up to this high guard and we get to attack first. The opponent has hesitated, we get to seize the initiative. You're gonna cross your hands right over left so that you're gonna seem like you're launching a thrusting attack. With this rolling over motion, you're actually gonna step and allow that to turn into a thwart cut. So you're throwing with the back edge at their left ear. Then you're going to fake a rising cut to their left lower opening. So for me, I just kind of give a half step and a body turn to really sell it. I'm going to snap it right back, throw uh, that thwart again, and then that crossed arm back edge cut at their right ear that we've seen in previous plays. And then we're going to step back and leave with a cut to the lower opening with our hands high. That is the first part of the play. So my kind of mental shorthand is from the high guard, fake the thrust thwart, fake the low thwart, crossed armed, leave with the undercut. That's kind of my mental shorthand. There are a few things that I find helpful, especially when I'm trying to use these pieces in sparring. When I pull up to the high guard, and for me, it doesn't, again, it doesn't matter if I'm in the guard of the day or if you're practicing a more uh, kind of settled bomb talk. When I'm high, I will actually fake not just the crossing, but a little bit of a, of a step out with the left. I really want the opponent to buy this. I step slightly across the line, off the line, because I don't want them to panic and knock my sword this way if they reach out and cut. If I'm crossed and they hit my point this way, the, the play kind of gets stuck because I can't really very well pull it back around my head and thwart if their sword is on top of mine. So the nice thing about thrusts is that they are an easy way to provoke your opponent to one side or the other. So when I'm in my high guard, depending on what position my opponent is, I will actually go slightly off the line with this thrust, trying to convince them if they're gonna contact my sword to parry out that way. So if I start to hit and they knock my sword, it'll actually power my thwart cut. So that's, that's one little thing. Meyer doesn't say to do this little kind of broken step, but I like it, so I, I tend to do it most of the time. So I will thwart, and again, a little, just, a, just a little shuffle step and a body turn. I want to use as minimal motion as I can to sell this attack, but I do need to sell it. So I throw here, and again, I keep my hands high. So even though I am threatening this lower attack, I don't do this right in front of my opponent. So I really need to use that step and body. And the nice thing about turning the hip is this, that lets me come back with a, a great deal of power. And then I'm gonna throw the crossed arm. We've seen this motion before, and we're gonna leave with that rising true edge cut with our hands high. So when I practice this on the Pell, I will be just a little bit out of range. I'll be in my high guard. So I'll do that little bit of a cheat step and then step with my right foot and throw the thwart cut. I will fake the rising cut back to the thwart, step over with the cross hands, and then I will leave with the low cut with high hands. And I'll, I'll just practice that. And again, when I'm doing this little kind of broken step, I am going slightly off the line because if my opponent is going to contact my sword on this 
initial thrust threat, I want to make sure that they're coming across this way and they're not batting my sword that way. So, fort, fake, cross arm, underneath. Fort, fake, cross arm, underneath. And I do tend to whip the back step. I back step so that I can finish the cut and then I will usually finish with the shuffle step so just so I'm all the way back out of range. So there's a little little bit of footwork pieces that, that Meyer doesn't explicitly describe in this play that I have incorporated both in my sparring and in my pell work because I, I think it works out a little bit better. Um, so play with that, play with with that kind of just and just a little bit. I'm I'm going maybe a foot's width to the outside. I just want to make sure that my opponent believes this thrust and they react appropriately to it so that I can get my nice sword cut. Again, just a little step in a lean. See how my head is going with the strong of my sword though? That's going to keep me protected. I'm going to fake it, snap right back, step over so that I can throw this high cross hand back edge cut, step back with the rising cut, finish with the shuffle. So that is how I practice Myers fourth play on the Pell when I, I'm still stuck at home in quarantine with a partner. So next week we'll look at the sequence that Meyer shows as a counter that starts against that low rising low cut. And then we'll, we'll kind of put it all together next week.